This is Alex Pierce, alexpierceproductions.com. We're going to continue going over basic stitching. If you haven't seen the previous two videos, go watch them now. Basically, in those videos, we've gone over um, basic synchronization. We've gone over the first stitch, how the preview panel works. We've gone over uh, the straightening tool. We've gone over uh, the masking tool. And today, we're going to go over a few more things. So we're going to go over color correction. We're going to talk about the control points editor. So let's go ahead and jump into color correction. Auto Pano's color correction is it's kind of weird. So I, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it does a good job of blending them all together. So if I, if I, if I look at the difference, if you look, so right now there's no color correction and now auto color correction's been done. It probably is an improvement. I mean, if you look here, it's, it, it levels things out a little bit. So um, this one might be a little bit tough to talk about, but let's see. So what I like to do is, if you right click on these images, you have some different options here. And what I like to do is, I like to click on the brightest image. So maybe that's three, or maybe that's six. Let's click on six and add this as the anchor. And then what that does is it uses this to, uh, to to gauge where to put the exposure for these other cameras. So I I do that because I want the sky to be blue. Typically, you know, if, the, if we're talking about an outside scene, I like to I like the sky to be blue. If it's dark scene, then then you know you might have to experiment with that. But but definitely spend some time experimenting with choosing different anchors and seeing what that does because it's it's kind of it's, it's a weird system, but um, if I click there, yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. It, it sort of gave me those blue skies. I try to do minimal color correction in color because I'm, I know that for me, I'm going to do color correction in post after I've stitched, after I've edited. So, so I like to do as, as little as possible here, but it is important that the image is uniform. So the other thing you can do is you can you can do some exposure compensation. You can let's see you can go over here to levels and you can do some adjustment here. And you know this 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 isn't a bad place to do it. You know, you can do some some interesting things here, but I just prefer to do this in in another program with with more flexibility and more latitude. But for now, if, if especially if you don't have, you know, the Adobe Suite or, or some other program, this isn't a bad way to do it. And and if you're not familiar with levels, uh, th this is basically like your blacks and your highlights here. So it's good to drag this to where the levels begin. So like if this black, if I drag to here in general, um, that looks better, right? Um, but ultimately, that's really what you're doing here is what looks better. So if I go here, well, it's more contrasty. And if this was a feature film, you know, maybe that's more the look that I'm going for. But this is a travel show, so we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it pretty pretty well lit. Okay. So now let's talk about the control points editor. The control points editor is really helpful. This top part has has your cameras one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can click on them. You know. Oops. So I can click on here, here, here. If I click, if I hold Control and push um, this, it'll bring up the different images, and you can see like if they have these. These are the control points. So images six and seven have this part in common. That's where it's stitched together. That's where it knows how it fits together. <coughs> I'm going to unclick all these. Now this bottom part is your link. So we were just looking at six and seven. So if I click on this link, six and seven, it's the same images, right? This is how many points you have, and then this is RMS. RMS is basically the lower this number is, the better it is. So I can easily look here and go, oh, well, this has the worst link. So I'm going to click on this one. Well, that's why. It's the sky. It's going to be hard to find anything um, in common here. So um, so that makes sense. Another thing to, to point out here in this tab is the control points. So on this... If I've, if I've selected a link like 4 and 5 and I go to control points, here it lists all the control points. So this one has 196 
control points, and then I can also scroll by RMS. So RMS, again, the lower the number, the better. So these are really good. If I click it again, these are not so good. Um, so when you're having trouble with a particular link, so if I go back to here and I go, oh, if I see that I'm having trouble between six and five, first thing I'll do is I'll just go to images five and six and I'll look at it, okay? So looking at it, in this particular example, there's nothing that really sticks out. Sometimes when you come to, the, to this panel, there are things where the software got it wrong. It, it's got control points in this guy's face on this image and on this image, it's on you know a girl's face or so, something like that. In that case, you can just delete those and, and try again. But I'm going to show you just a few of the tools and then um, give you some ideas of when to use those tools. So by default, you're on this Add Auto Control Points tool. It's a great tool. If you click, if you hold down the left mouse pad, you can click and drag. So I can click and select these 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 control points, and I can push delete um, if I want to. Um, if I yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all these. So you can see. So I'm just going to delete all these points. So now, if you look on this image and you look on this image, you can try to see where they are connected. So one thing I can tell, well, this guy's this guy's definitely in this image, right? If I click and drag it'll automatically add points there, okay? And then whenever you add points, the, the next thing you do is you optimize. So before you before you click optimize, I think it's a good idea to be able to switch back and forth between these two images quickly. So I use Alt-Tab. If you're gonna mouse, that's fine, but just be able to get here very quickly. So I'm gonna click optimize and quickly to come over here so we can see the difference. So you can see it changed, but there wasn't a dramatic difference. That's because there wasn't really an issue. But in other in other projects, that can make a huge change. So I will go into the control points editor in detail in another tutorial, but that's not for today's tutorial. Today's tutorial is a basic overview. So, so again, I can click on this whole part of the image and add more control points. And sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's not. You know, I'm going to go ahead and click optimization, see what it does. Didn't make that much of a change, but that's all right. So that's the basics of the control point editor. Yeah, one one thing to note. So I'm going to go here, control points. Sorry, I'm going to click on three and four control points. RMS. One of the good one of the good things to do is to just sort by control points. Go to the worst control points. So I just held shift and clicked all these, and then delete. That deleted the worst control points. Then push optimize and see what it does. And, and a lot of times that will fix uh, a lot of your problems. So that's it for today's tutorial. Thank you for checking us out. Um, again, my name is Alex Pierce, alexpierceproductions.com.